Hey everyone, um, this is Hydrogen at Home. Um, I wasn't going to do any videos for a while, but uh, I just picked up this power supply today, so I thought I'd uh, do a few things I wanted to do and share them with everyone. Uh, right now I'm just checking to see if the voltage that it's showing on its display here is exactly what I'm putting out. Right now I've got it set right on a red dot that says 13.8 volts, and that's what I'm getting out of it with my voltmeter, 13.81 volts. Um, this is capable of going up to 25 amps and the voltage is between 3 volts and 15 volts. I would have liked to have got one that went down to at least 2 volts but um, there wasn't any. Um, the only ones I could find that went that low only went up to 5 amps um, and this unit was cheaper too. I got this for um, 150 bucks Australian. Uh, it's got a cooling fan. As you can see, it's got a variable adjuster. It's hooked up to a cell at the moment. I'll show you that in a sec. But yeah, I can take these volts down. As you see, the amps go down. So I'm going to put that back up onto 13.8 or close enough to 13.8 volts. And, um,. Yeah, it's got a circuit breaker and a lot of other kind of stuff, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. It's going to be able to do quite a few tests, and um, the fact that it can't below go below 3 volts shouldn't slow me down too much. I've got no ways that I can get around that problem. So right now I'm going to test um, different parts of this line to see uh, what kind of voltage drop I'm getting. Okay, now I'm going to check um, the voltage drop just between these cables that are going from the power supply up to my old terminals here. Um, plug that in. Now I adjusted the voltmeter so that it was putting out exactly 13.8 volts on the power supply. And you can see here it's pulling 13.49, 13.5 volts over um, those cables alone. So there's a bit of power lost, voltage lost just through those cables. Now I'm going to check the other side of this terminal here, this switch. 13.37. So that's the voltage drop over that distance. Okay, now I'm checking between the um, connections on the plates themselves. I'm drawing 13.29 volts. So the um, so I've gone from 13.8 volts down to 13. Point, or 13.3 volts. So that's the total voltage um, lost over all of this cabling I've got here. It's also going through this other um, uh, amp meter here as well. Um, now I'm just going to see what's between the plates. This is the cell that came out of my um, uh, my dry cell unit. Okay. We're getting 2.18 volts between each plate. I'll try another plate, there might be a bit of difference. Oops. Yeah. 2.13. The gaps in this aren't perfectly uniformed all the way through. Um, the reason I'm using this cell again is uh, even though it's um, a poor grade of stainless steel, there's a couple of answers I wanted to um, get before I committed to uh, the holes in my new plates that I'll have to make. So um, I've, I've run it a few times like this to try and get a bit more of the gunk, um, the steel out of the stainless. And um, one thing I did notice with this cell, uh, with this gunk, producing this gunk, is that um, it had a lot more to do with how much electrolyte was in the water as to um, how quickly the, uh, the the gunk was created. That was the biggest factor, the electrolyte content, not so much the volts, because it did it both in this neutral plates sort of format and um, with no neutral plates. So, um, yeah, I'm going to um, clean this now and um, put it all back into the uh, dry cell configuration so I can do some more tests and um, we'll pick it up on the next video. Till then, I'll see you soon.